Welcome back to video number two for you pastors trying to start businesses. We've got business people here that are trying to help you out. Uh, we are going into five mistakes that people make when starting a business. We've got Bob two, Bob one, Peter and Grant. Bob, you're kind of helping us understand this. You've obviously run businesses. You've probably made some of these mistakes yourselves. I have made more That's, than my fair share. You're getting your experience here. So tell us, number one mistake, what's the number one mistake you think people make? Number one mistake, I think, is they just pick a wrong business. Okay, so we're, we're offering four types of businesses here. Yep. Uh, raising chickens, raising rabbits, raising goats, uh, pharmaceutical, possibly farming. Do they have to have a passion for this? Uh, it would be helpful, obviously, if they did. But again, more importantly than that would be that they just understand things like the market conditions that they're working under, supply, demand, those kind of things to make sure they're going to be successful. Great to have a great passion for a business. Now, I'm not going to say that's not going to help you get it to go through some tough times and et cetera. But if you're making a product or doing a product and there's no demand for that product, it doesn't matter how much you love it. Uh -huh. Everybody else has to love it too, yeah. uh, to buy it. Uh, so, so we're talking about a lot of research on the front end. Yeah, a lot of research. So let's even side the chicken business. There's several different types of chicken. Some chickens do better than in very arid areas. Some chickens do better in more uh, wetter climates. Uh, some chickens are for eating only. Some chickens are for laying eggs only. Some chickens you could do both. Uh, etc. So you really have a lot of research to do and you need to know who is out there selling chickens, who's buying the chickens, what is that kind of supply and demand uh, out there. You don't want to add more chickens to an area where everybody is chicken farming and there's more chickens than there are people to buy. It doesn't matter how passionate you are about that. That business is going to fail. So uh, you got to look at some market conditions. You got to look at the supply and the demand in that area for that product. You have to make sure that what you're doing is in the right kind of environment to do it in. Do you have, for example, when you talk about a chicken farm, you can't put that in the slums. No room. Don't have enough room to have a successful chicken business uh, in that environment. It's just too small. So you know, just because you want that business or you have a passion for that, uh, does not mean that it's going to work. Grant, one of the reasons you're so successful, you bought into a chain, but that train has tremendous demand. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Really what it comes down to is uh, an uh, incredible product that we don't compromise on. And so we really care about um, how good the food is. But the other piece is we go above and beyond on our our, we call it second mile service, and which is pulled from where Jesus says, if somebody asks you to go with them one mile, you need to actually go with them two. And so we try to go above and beyond what our competitors do. And so as we talk awesome. here about, hey, how do we distinguish ourselves from the chicken guy right next door? Well, we gotta figure out what that is. That's gonna be part of incorporating these businesses is how do we distinguish ourselves from the guy right next to us? Because that's how it works in America bunch of restaurants right next to each other and so what's going to make people come to my restaurant and and it's the product the quality of the food the speed how fast we can get the food out to our guests and then just our hospitality and our, our second mile service peter anything to add on our picking the wrong business yeah uh picking the wrong business is you know when you're doing something that uh, you do not have understanding of it and i have a personal experience in 2010 when I go to this new mission field where I am in North Coast, Kenya, um, I started, I got a farm and put the tractor. I had there is something that is called Sim Sim. I had never planted or farmed Sim Sim where I was born in the high range, so I didn't know where it is. But uh, Sim Sim makes money, so here there is lard and I have money. So I bring the tractor, it plows the lard, I plant. And I didn't uh, harvest even a cup of it. Why? <laughs> the rains had already passed. I didn't seek the knowledge from the community to know that you don't know you not only need money at large, you need to study the seasons of this area because you are very far from the river, you need rainwater for you to do this. And so I learned the hard way because I, I lost money. Completely I lost money. So the, the the business was wrong because I didn't know it, I didn't understand it. But I have learned, you know, later to do uh, businesses that I do understand. If I want to do, you know, tomato, 
I research about tomato. I know that this variety is not doing well, and even if it does well, it doesn't have a market, so I'll not do it. It can I can get a bumper harvest from it, but it won't last long in the market, so I'll avoid that. So understanding it has costed me to know that you do not only really need money but you need the knowledge to understand what exactly needs to be done in order for you to make you know a shilling out of what you're investing let me ask you a question on that sure do you think it's more important to have the knowledge or the money can you make a business work with knowledge without money can you make a one do without the other you need both you need both so very key what you're referring to, you gotta do your research. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that I personally think I could make a business work with knowledge before I needed the money. Yes. Let's, Some let's, businesses don't take anything but that. So Bob, that brings us to our, our second area, the perfect plan. Uh, talk about that, why do they need a perfect plan? And Well, I think that's just it, you don't need a perfect plan. I think there is no such thing as a perfect plan. I think as soon as you start into a business, it's gonna encounter an issue. And so your plan is going to go out the window. So the key is you've got to be able to get feedback mm -hmm. and adjust right. and, and have the resiliency as we talked about, Grant talked about a lot on the first session, is that that is the key. You've got to kind of know that your plan's not going to work. There's going to be something that's coming that's not going to make it work. Uh, a lot of people get caught up in what we're talking about where they, they almost overanalyze everything they feel like everything has to be in place before you can make any move we jokingly call that analysis paralysis that you are so much in that you've given yourself too many choices too many things etc so now you don't know how to move forward uh, in a business sometimes you set a basic plan in place which is what we're talking about doing a business plan that has some basic things in place but the majority out of it is you just got to go do it Okay, one of my favorite things, talking about being a Nike Christian or, or the business Nike, is the finishing strong Nike finishing Christian. Strong. Just do it. Okay. In the military, um, one of our most popular quotes was a good plan. It's by General Patton, who was a really famous general. And he said, a good plan executed now is better than a perfect plan next week. And so I think that's exactly where we're at. We, we don't have to have a perfect plan, but we do need a good plan. See, the thing is a poor plan executed now is not better than a perfect plan next week, right? And so our goal is to get to a place where it's a good plan. You have the support and the knowledge, that's what these videos are for, to execute a good plan, right? But it's better to do that a good plan now than to, like you said, analysis paralysis, getting to this point where we feel like it's perfect. And then, because the reality is, when we implement our business, there's going to be things that happen, and whatever perfect plan we thought we had is no yeah. longer going to even apply yeah. because you the, know things have changed. The best example I could give, Peter, uh, I, I'll ask you this question. So if you were going to have a child based on when you were ready to have a child, <laughs> the perfect scenario for having a child, would you ever have any children? Never. <laughs> Sometimes you have to Never. take a bit of a leap yeah. to fill in the spaces after. <laughs> Sure. Bob, in our, our off-camera time, we talked about the difference between if you had the plan or you had the money, which do you need? That brings us into our third mistake, spending money. Talk about that and, and help us to understand what if you've, what's better, the perfect plan or the perfect knowledge research or having the money? Ex ex elaborate on that for us. I, I, without a doubt, believe you have to have startup capital to some degree, but there are many businesses out there, not like what we're talking about necessarily, but that are service type businesses where they don't take any uh, infrastructure to build. They're all about the knowledge you have or the contacts that you have and the networking that you can do, et cetera. So in that Give case- Give us an example. In that a consulting business. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna consult, I did this. This is one of the jobs I had. I consulted to car dealerships on how to better run their dealerships. Mm -hmm. So everything that I had gone there would, it didn't require any infrastructure or anything like that. I went in with nothing but book knowledge, experience on something. So I would do everything from train their people to bring on different banking, uh, different products and et cetera, all from contacts, networking and everything that I had come up with during the time frame that I was in the business. So my knowledge was all I needed to run that business. Okay, I did not need uh, 
any books or hardware or anything else involved. So uh, I would tell you that, again, the knowledge behind what you're doing is more important than the money it necessarily takes to drive. The knowledge you're not necessarily going to get somebody else to do for you. The money you possibly could get an investor, get somebody that's willing to lend you the money that sure. believes in you, mm -hmm. etc. But how are they going to believe in you unless they know that you got all the knowledge you need to do to run that business? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay, so yeah. that becomes the the issue there. So uh, when we talk about spending money, the first thing I would say when you have a brand new business, your time is your investment in your business. Number that one. is the money you're going to spend. Mm -hmm. When you think about money, you think about time. Mm -hmm. So I tell you, you don't need to spend more money or hire somebody more to do something. That's an easy, quick fix, okay, that you're trying to get to. The, a good business, not good. you're going to have to invest more of your time, more of your hard work uh, into that business. Uh, we talked about this, do you tithe during the time frame you're trying to build your business? Because do you really have any money if it's all in your business? You can't tithe the chicken, okay? You don't even have raised chickens yet. Uh, so in this case, I would tell you, take time and think of it as money. So if you don't have money to tithe to your church or whatever, then tithe your time during that time frame and replace it with time, because sure. that's your investment right now, is your time. Grant, you got stuff to add to that when running your business? I mean, I, I would agree. It's just, it's one of those things, I think, um, it's like you, we always hear the analogy, putting the cart before the horse, right? Knowledge is the horse, right? Money is the cart. It's one of those things, our knowledge prece uh, precedes us. As we go with knowledge, the money will follow but if you lead with money and you don't have the knowledge the the cart's out of control right it, it crashes essentially and so really what we're trying to do is make sure that people have the knowledge they need which is um, an absolutely necessary essential component to running any successful business and again it doesn't need to be perfect knowledge but we need to have a great understanding of what we're trying to do what our goal is what our mission is what our milestones are how we're gonna get there. And then um, obviously there needs to be a little bit of capital up front to get started, but sure. most of the money will um, come after you have the necessary knowledge you need to run a, run a good business. And uh, if you'll notice, pastors, we, we've talked about five possible chickens, goats, rabbits, pharmaceutical land, and then there's another category called other. This may be what he was referring to. Maybe you've got a lot of knowledge, things that you realize, I could really make this thing fly, I could make it work, but I just need a little help starting up, et cetera. That's where we want to come in. You could write in something else other and let Bob evaluate it, Grant evaluate it. Let's see, and Peter, I'm sure, and Patrick will try to help us think through, yeah, this really is a good idea. We want to help you. We want to get you through that uh, and empower you in that area. Anything to add to that? Yeah, uh, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the way we spend our time. We have an old adage saying that uh, time is money. To me, I say that whosoever wastes your time, wastes your life. And if you're wasting my life, you are killing me gradually. So mm -hmm. it is good for you to allow me to spend my time properly. And, and if there is a weakness that uh, we have, uh, we as uh, fellow, me and my fellow Kenyans, is the way that we, we spend our time so even as we speak about how we spend our money, how we spend that time that God has given us, how, are we good steward over 24 hours that God has, that God has given us? So mm -hmm. we need to, to understand that we need to be good stewards of time in order for we to be good steward of money because we are being taught that money, a time is, is, is a fast resource, is a fast capital that we're going to invest mm -hmm. in the business that we're having. So it is very important. And uh, as I have relations with Kenyans overseas, I keep telling my one Kenyan friend, <laughs> go to YouTube. There's so much you can learn on YouTube. Yeah, there is. And uh, uh, you asked me, yeah. well, where, where did you learn woodworking? Yeah, exactly. YouTube. YouTube, yeah. Uh, and so I, I make things out of wood out of pleasure, but I learned mm -hmm. some of it from YouTube, mm -hmm. other just from practical experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I have any problem with my software, mm -hmm. I YouTube it. I never call tech support. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's hundred people who have gotten the answer on YouTube. Yeah. And so different creative things, you, you know, if you've got the knowledge, maybe you don't even need money. Maybe it's a, I'm, I'm an expert now in this area, I can help people out. Yeah. 
just going on YouTube? Yeah, <laughs> it is going on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> just to finish up. So instead of money, what you need to think yourself of as a problem solver, mm -hmm. you need to think in a way of how do I solve a problem not necessarily always talking about money. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I have written here is adversity is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. That more things have been created because of it needing to fill a need. Exactly. Okay, so that is what we're talking about. We're talking about having that entrepreneurial spirit and process where when you have a problem, okay, you try to find a way to solve that problem Okay, that doesn't always necessarily mean you got to have money to do it. Do, is the entrepreneurial mind in Kenyan? Does the average Kenyan think entrepreneurially, think up new new ideas, new thoughts that no one else has thought of, or do they are they what we call slot fillers? I'll fill this slot. I'll do this. Is it is it natural for people to think outside the box? It's natural for some, it's not natural for many. Many live on what we call survival mode. Mm -hmm. The mode of survival, I'm doing whatever I can do to survive but not to drive. So if you are getting into a business just for survival, you will be swept away, you know, uh, very mm -hmm. soon. But if you want to drive, that means that you need to get into searching for more knowledge to be effective in what you're doing. And I love what the Bible says in the book of James that whosoever does not have knowledge among you, let him, no, whosoever doesn't have wisdom among you, let him pray. You know, at times this word knowledge and wisdom are used interchangeably. So we've got to surround ourselves with people who are going to help us to have a driving mentality, not a survival mentality. And if you don't have one, ask God for it. Sure. He can give it to you. He's the one who thought up everything. Yeah. He is a creative God, a God of creativity. He can give you an entrepreneurial, creative idea. Ask God, beg him, give me a business idea that's so unique yeah. that I can glorify you with. If the, if the motivation is to glorify God, he'll give it to you. Bob, the next one you've got is try to do it alone. Why is that a mistake? Well, I, we can start out from a biblical standpoint. We were made to be in community with each other. Yeah. That's how we operate best uh, as, as people, as God's people. Uh, but, you know, there's a old saying, it takes a village to be very successful. You can never do it on your own. Uh, there's just too much. So we're talking about things like, first off is, uh, you're going to need the support of your family. They're going to have to be involved in this. There is no way that you're successfully going to run a chicken business mm -hmm. with the schedule we're talking about, etc. Maybe you're out of town. Who's going to feed the chicken? <clears throat> Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Keep them warm. Yeah. Are you going to go hire somebody and spend money like we talked about in the section before? Okay. That's one way to solve it. But it'd be a whole lot better if I know I can count on my son who will come out and feed my chickens. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's helping provide for him and, and your family, etc. So he's got a vested interest in doing it for you, etc. And it will cost you nothing. So you got to have some support to make it. You can't do this all by yourself. Grant, tag on to that. Do you run your business by yourself? Definitely don't do it myself. There's no way I'd be able to survive in my business without a <laughs> solid team. That being said, it, it takes a while to get there, right? Um, my my restaurant has a reputation, has a history of decades to get it to a point where we can build an organization that is very um, complex with a lot of awesome leaders. Um, so for you guys, it's one of those things, you may not start with a big organization or a large team, but you at least start with your family, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, or maybe it's just one brother in the church that's holding, whatever it looks like, you just can't do it alone. Part of this whole thing is gonna be you pastors collaborating with each other, getting ideas from each other. Some of you have an entrepreneurial mindset that's um, more advanced than the person next to you. Um, but it's one of those things, that's okay. As long as you have a desire to learn, as long as you can think, uh, you know, work to think a little bit differently on, hey, how can I do this business? You know, I might not have a completely new idea of a business, but hey, I know that this business would work in this area and I could distinguish myself from the guy next to me just by this minor way, that might be sufficient enough. And so I think 
working as a team, having somebody next to you who can encourage you, who can hold you accountable is absolutely key, but also just this desire to learn and to grow and, and to do things better, I think is, is absolutely essential. And I think part of what we're talking about is you, you don't just need physical support, you need emotional, spiritual mm-hmm. support while you're going through this. You need to have people that are there for you, that are praying for you, that are helping you through tough times by keeping you built up, you know, et cetera. If you don't have that kind of support, it mm-hmm. will be very, very hard to be successful. Bob, you had another point there you were going to talk about. Yeah, I'd say that uh, a, a good person will find a mentor. That mentor hopefully would be somebody that's currently doing the type of business you're doing, but it does not have to be. Just somebody that has a good business mind, uh, somebody that you can ask questions about. A lot of businesses have similarities. Uh, Bob, you know, his business has nothing to do with what I do for a living, et cetera, but he will call me and we have conversations about business and et cetera and how it may apply or not apply to what he's doing, uh, et cetera. So it does not have to be, but a successful business person will have certain attributes and things that they can help you with to help you grow as an individual uh, and et cetera. It's not always that they're going to have an answer to a direct situation you're having problem with your business it's not always that support it's sometimes just the support of someone who understands what you're going through because he's a business owner too Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or he has experienced similar things that you're going through and so he can help guide you through it uh, and etc so having a mentor I think is a key I don't know very many people who Mm -hmm. can't tell me that somebody in the process of them becoming successful in anything we don't even talk business Okay, in my growth as a Christian, I have a mentor, mm-hmm. somebody that I have that helps me to become better yeah. and, and, and more mature in what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Grant, how much training did you get to start your business? Training was really my life, you know? Everything that I went through in my life, whether it was basketball, some sports, teams that I was a part of, being a part of the military. Obviously, when I um, got uh, agreed to do the franchise. I had specific training for what I was um, being hired to do, essentially. But at the same time, it, it's one of those things. Like a lot of a lot of the pastors that we're talking to now, a lot of you have have been through very difficult things, and so there might be some cultural things that we need to get better at, right? But at the end of the day, we all have had to be resilient at times, and so I would say our lives are oftentimes the best trainers. Yes, we're gonna have to go through a more specific training for whatever business you decide to do, but a lot of the things we're talking about, it could naturally naturally already be in you. It's those are the things we just need to emphasize, and there are gonna be some habits that are obviously gonna need to change for a lot of you. Um, for example, the hard work. If you don't work hard, your business will not be successful. If you don't have somebody to hold you accountable, your business will likely not be successful. If you don't have a desire to learn, your business will not be successful. And so, yes, the training is important, but at the end of the day, as business owners, you're always gonna encounter something that you have not dealt with before, right? So training is good, but it only goes so far. It's the core values of who you are as a person that is ultimately gonna be the most important, um, the most important quality when it comes to actually sustaining your business over a period of years. So you've been in the restaurant business for how long now, with Chick-fil-A? Been in for four years. Okay, and so have you stopped learning? Have you stopped training? Absolutely not, and again, you you build up those those, uh, qualities that are needed, right? Um, and and, And the big things don't affect you maybe as much as they once did, but ultimately, at the end of the day, um, again, I didn't really want to get into the restaurant industry, but now that I've been in it and I've learned it and I know it, I like it a lot more. And so that that spurs me on to want to continue learning and take the business to the next level, right? There's not this, um, you know, there are goals that we're running towards, but it's more just the desire to learn every single day, the desire to impact the people that work for me that that causes my business to actually grow and achieve even more success because 
Um, it's that mindset. It's those core values, the things that we're talking about that yeah. lead us there. In a corporate environment, I won't necessarily say a chicken business, whatever. In a corporate environment, do you ever, ever max out? Is, is the owner, uh, the ultimate franchise owner of chick fil ever going to tell you that, okay, you've done good enough, right. Right? you don't need to do any more, you don't have to improve over last year? Definitely not. It's just, again, yeah. a good business owner has that mindset that he is always learning the business. I joke around and say that in the, in the business, you are green. If you're green, you will grow. If you are ripe, you will rot. So the moment you think you know everything you need to know, you are now <laughs> taking a slide in, in, in the wrong direction. Okay. You stay green, you stay on the idea mm -hmm. that you've got to consistently keep changing and adapting and get feedback and make adjustments, you will continue to grow. Sure. And, and maybe uh, in the point of having the support base, more so your fa uh, a family, and because we are talking about pastors, I, I know Many of you, you have maybe a husband or a wife, and a wife, or a wife and, and children. Even if you don't have children, you have a, a niece, a nephew who lives with you. This is the support base we are talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and by getting a mentor, you're getting somebody who is giving you the knowledge that you need. But you also have your contemporaries whom you are exchanging ideas because you are doing the same business. They are so, so much higher above, above you. But at about, and, and you also have mentees, people whom you're mentoring to and uh, this is where we are talking about the family, the support base, because one of the problems that we have is that we, I have seen business people who die and they die with their businesses because the wife didn't know what you're doing, doesn't mm -hmm. know whether you have dates or not, your children doesn't know any vaccination of, the, of that chicken or whatever, so incorporating our family in what you're doing, it's not only a support base, but it is also bringing in the aspect of a longevity of your business. Mm -hmm. This business will be in a position to outlive you. And when you read the Bible in Mark chapter six, you hear Jesus being called the son, the carpenter, actually not the son of the carpenter. They say, isn't this the carpenter? Meaning that Jesus, Joseph, the father, being a carpenter, he incorporated Jesus in what he was doing and Jesus was a carpenter. So we need to help our sons, our daughters, our wives, our husbands to be to come on board and to learn what we are doing. And this is how you'll be in a position to free yourself and go out and do something else because you have something back, somebody back at home who can do what you have been trained to do. So we can't make it alone. We need one another. Mm. Bob, we talked about five mistakes. We've got one left to go operating in a bubble talk about that yeah operating in a bubble similar to what we're talking about but not operating by yourself but also don't just operate in a small a bubble uh, environment of just you and just your family and those kinds of things that when you're really going to be successful in a business you have to think outside the box some to do that i call it being a paradigm pioneer that is, think sometimes the opposite of what's going in your market and whether that, that is a possibility uh, of doing things, uh, it, kind of turning it, it upside down a little bit mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing. Uh, books, resources, that kind of stuff to keep on top of business, to keep educating yourself on the changes that are happening in the business. In uh, Kenya, for example, they had two different breeds uh, that they recommended for a long time. And now they've got one where they've done a hybrid of those two. That's something fairly new in the Kenyan uh, community right now. So uh, if you keep up on things, if you just stay inside your bubble, you don't know that that breed exists. You have a better chicken out there that you could be doing that could be more productive and, and et cetera. So you have to, to do that. So you have to learn to do things like network yourself. You network for a lot of things, for information, but you will also find that you network for better product, better things, like I'm buying my feed from a particular place. Well, if I network, I may find out that I can buy the same feed from somebody else yeah. for less money mm -hmm. or better quality feed from this person than this person, uh, et cetera. So you have to constantly work outside your, just your normal area where your bubble that, that, you're, that is your, let's say, town that you're, you're working in or living in and understand that you know, the best chickens to buy to start your business may not be in your town. Mm -hmm. The best place to sell your product may not be in your town. It may be at the next town over. Mm -hmm. It may actually be a, another business who is willing to buy your product directly from you for their business. Mm -hmm. But you don't know these things and you'll never 
get to know those things if you do not work outside your bubble and network yourself and understand that, as I say, you are not necessarily your target environment. Sure. Okay. Grant, that goes back to you saying you've got to be a, a always be a learner. Right. Yeah. Always be a learner. And the thing I would add to that is one of the main ways we sometimes operate in a bubble is not listening to what our customers are saying. Mm -hmm. And so I think as you guys start your businesses, listen to our guests, listen to your customers. What are the things that you're hearing people in your community say is a need or, hey, every time they need this specific item, they have to walk 10 kilometers mm -hmm. to get it. It's a, if you're not operating in a bubble or if you kind of pop that bubble, you're listening and you're, you're learning from your guests. You're learning from the people that are buying your chickens. Maybe they're giving you actually specific um, feedback on the product that you're selling and they want something a little bit different. And that's how, as business owners, we learn what our guests are saying because ultimately the guests are the ones that are keeping us afloat. And so if we don't have a customer focus, if we're not focused on what our guests are actually saying when they come and buy from us, then that's the fastest way for you to become irrelevant. And Grant, you actively seek those out. You actively seek out customer input, correct? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the main things that we try to do is listen to the voice of the guest. And you know, in my business, we sell many different products. And so as leaders, we're constantly looking at guest feedback and then we're making changes or we're, we are refining processes or we're implementing a specific training on whatever item maybe our guests are saying is is not as hot as it should be or or whatever it is and and we're trying to do that as quickly as possible in a real time uh situation so that by the time that person <clears throat> comes back to the business that uh, complaint or whatever they had was is fixed yeah so when you operate in a bubble you have a tendency to do the same thing over and over the same way year after year, month after mm -hmm. month or whatever. And so as we say sometimes, what is the definition of insanity? Is mm -hmm. doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result, okay? So a good business, like we'll talk about Chick-fil-A and those kind of things, they will basically, on at least an annual basis, they will take their entire model uh, especially of their expenses, things they're purchasing, etc., and they will relook at them all as is there a better company to provide us our chickens? Does Chick fil A buy millions of chickens from all the same people all the time, or do they renegotiate contracts all the time? Mm -hmm. Private individuals, large corporations, whatever. That's what you do. You take your whole business and you say to yourself, okay, let's look at this this year. What can we do? What can we do different? One of the things you would do is you would shop all your vendors, as we say, all the stuff you have to purchase and find out is there better, is there a better, cheaper, you know, those kinds of options. And when doing that, you're operating outside that norm, that bubble that I would say that you, you got to be careful to stay in because if otherwise, it's just the same thing over and over. And at, and, and at some point, like you're saying, you start becoming irrelevant. Okay, Bob, we talked about five mistakes people make when they start a business. Let's review them. Number one, pick the wrong business. Pick the wrong business. Number two, they think they have to have a perfect plan. Grant, they have to have a good plan, not a perfect plan. Number three, they think money is the answer to everything. Nope, sometimes it's knowledge, it's family, bringing them in. They try to do it alone. And finally, they operate in a bubble. Well, thanks for being with us in our second video series. We look forward to the third. Hope this is helpful. Hope this is generating new ideas inside of you uh, as you begin to dream with God about your business. Thank you.